a great day. By noon, I figured it had been coming down steadily for about 40 hours. I think it was Friday, but it could have been any other day in the week because they'd all been the same. In my business, all the days are pretty much the same when there's no business. There's especially no business when it rains. People seem to want to stay home and contemplate their problems. I was contemplating folding up and going into the umbrella business because there's no money in making paper airplanes. <laughs> Mr. Abel? Yes? You, uh, dropped something. Oh, thanks. I don't think it will ever stop. The rain? The way it's coming down, it looks like it might not stop for a week. Oh, won't you sit down? How much do you charge, Mr. Abel? Well, uh, that depends on how much you want done. Very little. But, uh, don't you have a standard fee? I thought that most, uh... Well, I, I'm not most. I'm, I'm just mostly, uh... Now, you see, sometimes people want me to do things that I, I don't care to do. I don't think you'll mind this. I want you to uh, pick up an envelope. Just pick up an envelope? I want you to pick it up tonight, and uh, I'll call for it tomorrow. Uh, well, why can't you pick it up yourself? Why I can't is uh, personal. And why I want you to pick it up is uh, strictly business. I see. How much will you charge for this little chore, Mr. Abel? Well, if you're going to uh, take a while making up your mind, I, I think I will sit down. Oh, I just uh, wanted to find out a few things about you. What I want you to do is uh, really quite simple. I hear that a lot. Uh, suppose we start with you telling me your name. Mary Higgins. Mm-hmm. Not much of a name, is it? Well, it's easy to remember. Now, what's this? Take it to the fights, ringside. You'll pick up the envelope at the 8th Avenue exit of the stadium. Just keep it. And I'll pick it up here tomorrow at your office. Who's going to give it to me? A man. How's he going to know me? You're known, Mr. Abel. Why do I have to see the fight? That's part of the deal. Well, uh, why don't you meet me here afterwards? Sounds like a nice idea. Sorry, I can't. Okay. Uh, who's fighting? Gil Bishop and Chico Sanchez. Oh, that's no fight. Bishop will murder him. How much do you say you charge me, Mr. Abel? Hundred dollars a day in expenses. Do you want something from me now, or can I pay you tomorrow? No, tomorrow's all right. Maybe I can get another ticket. We can both go. Sorry. Crowds make me nervous. Well, that's too bad. By the way, uh, who do you like in the fight? The winner. And that's how it started. An attractive girl named Mary Higgins, a ticket to the fights, and an envelope to be picked up. I haven't been right about anything lately, and tonight was no exception. It was Bishop who was getting murdered. dinner and taken the edge off my appetite with three hot dogs and a bag of peanuts. I'd forgotten how thirsty peanuts can make you. Hey, you got any cream soda? Sanchez can throw him with either hand. He's a doll. Huh? Nothing. What's eating you, friend? Three hot dogs, a bag of peanuts, and a blonde. Blonde? What blonde? I almost forgot the cream soda. That's the way it went. A 300-pound flabby fan digging his elbow into my ribs every time his boy, Sanchez, threw a punch. Somehow, cream soda didn't taste the way it did when I was a boy. Get him, Sanchez! Get a load of that right hand! Oh, that's 
my boy Sanchez. You two certainly deserve each other. Huh? Something wrong, friend? Yeah, your elbow keeps jumping out of gear. Oh, sorry, friend. You don't feel so good, huh? Not exactly what you'd call tip top. How could they make him the favorite? Sanchez will knock his head off. Yeah, well, I hope he doesn't knock it this way. Tonight I'm liable to swallow anything. Huh? Nothing. Excuse me. The whole thing had gotten out of hand. A kind of chain reaction starting with Mary Higgins and exploding in the middle of the main event. I got outside and soaked up the air for a while. By 10.30, I had definitely sworn off cream soda and peanuts. And I tried my best to think of Mary Higgins less as an attractive blonde and more as a mere paying client. The fight was over, and now I had to meet the man who was going to give me the envelope. Hello, friend. Oh, no. Well, you won, friend. Bishop knocked Sanchez out in the tent. Yeah, well, swell. Now, if you don't you mind... You shouldn't be standing out here. You might get your death. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm waiting. You know, you wasn't feeling too good inside. I'm still not feeling too good inside. Hey, you should go home. Yeah, sure. But you see, I'm waiting here to meet somebody. You met him. Huh? Now, go home, friend. Before you really get sick. After stopping in at Joe's for a cup of coffee, I felt better, but not much. I headed down 6th Street, trying to forget the evening and concentrate on a nice hot shower and 10 solid hours of uninterrupted sleep. That's far enough. What's going on? Get in the alley. Look, fellas, I've been pretty sick. Yeah, we're gonna help you. Yeah, relieve you. Now move. Now wait a minute. We haven't got that much time. What? Surprised, huh? A little. Now, you won't tell anybody about it, now, will you? Or about us, huh? How could anybody ever forget you two? Well, maybe we can help you. You think he'll forget us? Sure, he will. I remembered was somebody laughing. I couldn't appreciate the joke, even if I'd heard it. <laughs> ah, shut up. All I could think about was the beating I'd taken in the general area housing the hot dogs, peanuts, and cream soda. What happened to you? You look terrible. I should. A couple of guys with guns shoved me in an alley and worked me over. Lady, you picked the wrong delivery boy. Oh? But you did get the envelope, didn't you? If you don't mind, I think I'll put on some coffee. It's already made. Thanks a heap. Where's the envelope, Mr. Abel? I hope you made it strong. I always do. Good. It, it's got to be to hold me up. But you're going to meet me in my office. The man who gave you the envelope called me. He um, said you were acting strangely. The fat man? That's the one. Who is he? A friend. All right, Mr. Abel, where is it? Now it's your turn to look terrible. 
They took it about a pint of my blood. They took it? You were supposed to deliver that envelope to me. Okay, I tried, but someone wanted it more than you did. Can't say I blame them. What do you mean? There was a lot of loose cash in there. Looked like all hundreds. There was $20,000 to be exact. Oh, I'm sorry. I did what I could. What did the two men look like? Like a couple of Sherman tanks. Are you sure you were held up, Mr. Abel? Look, honey, I know what you're driving at, but I'm a little too uncomfortable to even resent it. And I resent losing $20,000. I said I'm sorry. Now, if you excuse me, Miss Higgins, I'll change my clothes. Well, that certainly rounded out the evening. When I came to this time, I was trying to focus on a face. When it finally came in clear, I decided it looked better out of focus. The face belonged to Lieutenant Bernie Schumann. How do you feel? You really want to know? Sure. You promised to make it interesting. Oh. I may kill somebody. Fair. No. On second thought, I may kill two or three people. Now, that's pretty interesting. Yeah? Well, I may even start with you just for laughs. You better stand up first. What's the use? People just knock me down again. All night long, people have been knocking me down. And that thing was a collector's item. You collected it all right. Very funny. You know, I saw you at the fights. How could you miss me? I was bright green. It's the first time I ever got a Mickey in a cream soda. We had your seat staked up. Thanks. Yeah? We wanted to see who passed you the envelope. You know about that, huh? Well, we're more efficient than you think. We knew it was supposed to be passed tonight to whoever took that seat. You know what was in the envelope? Money. $20,000. That's a lot of money. What's it all about? It was supposed to be a fix. We got a tip that Bishop was going to take a big dive. Dive? Bishop belted Sanchez out. Can't understand it. Who did you pick up the envelope for, Johnny? A little girl named Mary Higgins. Know where we can find her? No, but don't worry. I'll find her. I gotta change my clothes. How come you didn't fail me? We did. I had a man on you, but he lost you on 6th Street. I was being robbed in an alley. Well, we were being efficient. Who got the envelope? Oh, two guys. One big one, one medium size. Both very antisocial. Think you'd recognize them? Sure. I was lying on my back. Hey, how about the fat man at the fight, the one that gave me the envelope? He's the one I really want to talk to. We started to pick him up. He didn't like the idea and pulled the gun. My partner beat him to the draw. He's dead? Mm-hmm. Great. That shows you how efficient you can really be. Well, I finally knew that what I'd walked into was a big fight fix with a pretty blonde named Mary Higgins mixed up in it, and a fat guy who also got mixed up in it and died for his trouble. It sounded like our little Mary was involved in big-time gambling. So I staggered over to the Silver Slipper, owned by one of the biggest gamblers in the city, Lester Worth. Good to see him. Can you do me a favor, Lester? Depends. You know a girl named Mary Higgins? Mary Higgins? Blonde, five feet four. Excuse me. It's okay. No, I don't know any Mary Higgins. Do you want me to see what I can find out for you? Yeah. What do you know about the fight tonight? What about it? A well, boy named Bishop was supposed to go in the tank, but he didn't. Is that right? Mm-hmm. There was a $20,000 payoff that was supposed to go to uh, Mary Higgins. What are you so interested for? I picked it up and got worked over for my trouble. I'm a little unhappy. Oh, well, that's too bad. 
Have a drink, you'll feel better. No, I'll feel better when I find the girl and the two guys that worked me over. Don't want to talk about the fight, huh? If Bishop was supposed to take a dive, why don't you talk to his manager about it? He's sitting right over there. Do you know him? Famous King, sure. So go talk to him. I'll do that. Oh, uh, you wouldn't know anything about the two guys that uh, took me, would you? Not a thing. Uh -huh. See you around. Hello, Amos. Well, Mr. Abel, sit down. Thanks. It's Miss Rogers, Mr. Johnny Abel. Hi. Hello. We were just leaving. Oh, I won't take long. Take all the time you want, Mr. Abel. We weren't going anyplace special. I thought you wanted to go someplace and dance. It's early. You like to dance, Miss Rogers? As a matter of fact, I love it. Do you like to dance, Mr. Abel? Well, it depends. On who you're dancing with? Mm, something like that. Come on, Abel. What's on your mind? Yes. What's on your mind, Mr. Abel? <laughs> who's fixing your fighters? Huh? He said, who's fixing your fighters? Butt out. What are you talking about? Bishop was supposed to lose tonight, wasn't he? Are you crazy? Are you, Mr. Abel? Sure. Listen, Abel, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you didn't hear about the fight. Bishop won by a knockout in the 10th. Yeah, but there was $20,000 that said he wasn't supposed to. I don't know anything about $20,000. The police do. Let's change the conversation. I don't like cops. I told you to shut up. Listen, Abel, I don't like you. But I'm giving it to you straight. I don't know anything about a fix. I run my stable on the up and up. Okay. You know a girl named Mary Higgins? Never heard of her. Old friend of the family's? Not especially. Bishop got a girl? Yeah, but her name ain't Mary Higgins. Now, if you don't mind, I'd feel better if you just shove off. Must you? It's been a real pleasure, Miss Rogers. And take my advice. Be careful where you peddle that talk about a fix. Could get you into a lot of trouble. <laughs> There's always a limit to trouble, and I think I've bagged the limit. Bye. Bye. What's the matter with you? Don't you know who that guy is? I was only trying to be nice. Oh, you were only trying yeah, to be yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, I was only trying to be nice. Keep your big mouth oh. shut the next time. Schumann gave me the mugs, and I spent the next hour trying to identify the two boys who put me to sleep in the alley. I must have looked at at least a thousand mugs. Any luck? Not yet. I had a couple of the boys stake out Bishop's apartment. They talked to him? He isn't there. Landlady says he hasn't been home since this morning. That's funny. You know, you'd think a guy who'd put in a hard ten rounds would go home and sleep it off. He's not with his manager. I did find out a few things about the fat man that slipped you the envelope. His name is Carl Brinks. Long record. Been running a book for Lester Worth. Operating for the last two years. Well, a lot of guys work for Lester Worth. Just because he did doesn't have any necessary connection. You say Mary Higgins is blonde about 5'4"? Yeah. Worth used to run around with a little blonde. But her name was Marge Connolly. So? Bishop's got a girl. Yeah, I know. This manager told me. Blonde, about 5'4"? Marge Connolly, Mary Higgins. Could be the same girl. Marge works for Worth, and Mary works on Bishop. Well, that would make sense if Bishop threw the fight. You didn't have to bring that up, you know. I was doing pretty good. I'll give you a chance to do even better. Drive me home, we can talk about it on the way. Okay. Now look at the rest of your uh, family album in the morning. This looks pretty funny. Depends on your sense of humor. Look, I'm waiting to see Johnny Abel. He lives in that apartment. You always do your waiting in closets? If you want to call a cop, go ahead. I'm waiting to see Abel, and I had a good reason to be in that closet. That's me. You're Johnny Abel? My name's Bishop. Yeah, I know. I saw you fight Sanchez. He was doing pretty good until... Come on, the truck is getting heavy. We do our talking inside. Why don't you sit down? Then we'll both be more comfortable. I uh, 
want to talk to you about Mary Higgins. Well, that's an interesting subject. You know where she is? Why should I know? I know she came here to see you. You know why she came to see me? You know, all right. You were a three to two favorite, and you're supposed to throw the fight. Are you crazy? You were supposed to, but you didn't. And Mary Higgins knew that you weren't going to, and she uh, bet 12 grand on you to win. At three to two, that would make uh, 20,000 bucks. How'd she get a hold of that kind of dough? All right, I put it up. It's all we had between us. I, I sent it to Carl. The fat man? Yeah. Then you booked the bet in my name, right? Well, I couldn't very well use my own name, betting with Worth. So we decided after I won the fight, we'd take the money and get out of town. Maybe blow the fight game, settle down someplace. Look, I don't care about the money. Mary's disappeared. Her real name's Marge Connolly, isn't it? Yeah. But Marge Connolly's Lester Worth's girlfriend. Not anymore. Uh-huh. You see, I met her a couple of months ago. Worth gave a party the night I beat Rocky Fuller, and, well, it uh, got to be something pretty special, permanent. And Worth found out about it. That's right. He would have killed her. But he didn't. No, he... He told her if I didn't throw the fight, he'd have me taken care of. She was scared. She begged me to do it. So you crossed him up? Look, I never tanked a fight in my life. Very commendable. So by staying honest, you made a little killing on the side, huh? Why not? I bet on myself. Look, we knew we couldn't bet a fight in this town without Worth finding out about it. But he did find out about it. Yeah. I think I'll go see him. You want to get yourself killed? Best thing you can do for anybody is to stay right... apartment across town. We better get over there. We'll get over there, all right. But I'm getting a little tired of bleeding every place we go. This time we're going the safe way with the police escort. They're going to arrest the Schumann. I'll watch the boys. Right. You know, for a sick guy, you're pretty rough. You got to catch me when I'm healthy. <laughs> raining again, and suddenly I saw a ray of sunshine. But it wasn't for me. The decision went to young Bishop. Okay. Okay what? It kept me up half the night. Buy me a cup of coffee. Okay. Who want to talk to you, young lady? Ah, oh, come on. If you want to talk to somebody, talk to me. You can start being a cop again after breakfast. What are you, a court of friendly relations or something? The friendliest. Clark, and this is Barbara Hale. We'd like to tell you about Ford Theater's next presentation entitled Behind the Mask. It's the highly dramatic story of a doctor who, in his fervent desire to help mankind, finds he has violated the basic codes of his profession. And I play the part of Nora, his nurse. At least I start out that way, but as the story unfolds, I become much more important than that to him. Try to join us when Ford Theater next presents Behind the Mask. We know you will enjoy it. Good night. <laughs> 